Welcome to Stormwater Drainage Solutions. I'm your host, Corey Barlotti. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about why corrugated pipe got such a bad name in the industry. Now, there's two major reasons that this happened. The first reason is being the installer. If it's installed improperly, you're gonna have problems. There's no way around that. The second reason is gonna be the material the pipe is made out of, including the fittings. If it's a bad pipe and a bad material, also, you're going to end up having issues. Now, take a look at this. This is a perfect example right here of an installer error. This pipe that we ripped out of the ground had a huge belly in it. Look at all that roof shingle gravel that gathered in the belly. Now, I went ahead and I cut this pipe down into sections. That way you can see the shingle gravel throughout it. It is a very large amount that comes off of the roof when it rains, and that shingle gravel will gather in any type of pipe. It doesn't matter if it's corrugated, if it's SDR, 35 PVC, if it's Schedule 40, triple wall, dual wall, it doesn't matter. Here is an example of a camera snake in a PVC system. As you can see, this is inside of a belly right here. That's why there's all these leaves and debris, shingle gravel and sediment that gathered in that area. Now I've pushed the camera snake past that belly and as you can see, the line is clear. Anytime you have a belly in the line, it's going to gather sediment and shingle gravel and debris. It doesn't matter the pipe that you use. Here's another example of a PVC system. We're gonna take a look down in the clean out and you're gonna see there is a ton of sediment and dirt that has gathered at the bottom of this line. It doesn't matter if it's a smooth walled pipe. Dirt, shingle gravel, sediment is heavier. And even in a rainstorm, it's gonna to wanna to sink to the bottom, especially in a belly or a backflowed area of any type of drainage system. Remember to give 811 a call before you do any excavation. That way they can come out and mark any utility lines that may be in the area. Here we are digging our trench for our dual piped corrugated system. Now when we dig this trench, we're gonna make sure that we dig it with fall. That way when we put our pipes in the trench, the water's gonna flow in the direction that we want it to go. Now it's a dual pipe system because one line is gonna have our gutter downspout drain and the other line is gonna be a French drain. Now we go a step further and we add a leaf filter on our downspout. That way it catches any large debris that may make it into the system, like leaves and tree seeds and sticks. Now, the reason you wanna keep these two pipes separate is because you do not wanna contaminate your French drain system with roof shingle gravel, sediment, or anything that may make it into that line. It's gonna clog the perforations and it's gonna make your French drain work slowly and it's not gonna work as well. Now, the other major reason you do not want to have these two lines together is because the French drain is gonna act as a giant leach field if you have a bunch of gutter water going into it. So it's gonna make a soggy yard even worse. So you wanna keep these two lines separate. Now, when you are ready to discharge your French drain, once you have it ran and it's collected the water you want it to collect in that area, you're going to Y them together into one solid pipe, one main line that's gonna take both the gutter water and the French drain water out of that area. Now, it's okay to combine them at this point with a Y because all your solids are gonna to continue to stay in that solid line and they're not going to get into that French drain line. And same with the water to create that leach field effect like I was talking about. So keep your pipes separated. Now, another thing, whenever you're working with corrugated pipe, always make sure you tile tape your joints. Notice when we were working with that Y, we were tile taping up each joint. You wanna make sure that you do this. That way you do not lose water at the joint and roots do not enter in there. Roots are always gonna enter in at a joint, nine times out of 10. So make sure that you tile tape them up whenever you're working with corrugated pipe. Now, when it comes to geotextile filter fabric, this is very important when you're building a French drain. Now, I'm gonna be showing you guys some examples in this video here, why you need to use a good geo fabric and wrap the entire system, stone and all, because if you do not wrap the entire system and you only have the pipe wrapped, dirt is going to migrate into the stone and clog it. Roots are gonna then grow through there and they're gonna grow straight through that filter fabric into the pipe. Now here's a perfect example of what I was talking about. This right here is called socked pipe. A lot of guys will buy this pipe, they will throw it in the ground, they might put rock around it and they may not. Ultimately, what ends up happening 
100% of the time is this right here. Roots start growing right through the sock pipe. They grow through the perforations and they get into the pipe and they clog it up fully. You're not gonna be snaking this out. You're not gonna be jetting this out. Once it goes to a certain point, it's the, the system's gonna be ruined once these roots get to a certain point. Now, here's the exact same system that I was showing you that I cut open that sock pipe. I'm running my camera snake through it. That way we can show you guys what happens to these sock pipes when you throw them in the ground. Like I said earlier, they may have thrown some, some aggregate in that trench as well, but it's not gonna do any good once the dirt migrates into it over time. The roots are still gonna grow through it and they're gonna get all in the system just like this. That is why it's important to use a good non-woven geotextile filter fabric to wrap the stone and the pipe. Roots are gonna grow through that fabric, but once they get into the stone, they are not gonna reach the pipe because there's gonna be too much airflow in the dry season, and these roots are not gonna be able to survive in there. So you do not wanna skip that step, it's very important. Another thing, you cannot use any kind of filter fabric or landscaping fabric. A lot of guys, they'll go to Home Depot or Lowe's and they'll buy some kind of landscaping fabric from there and try to use it as a filter fabric for a drainage system. This does not work. It does not allow water to penetrate. It is not the correct type of fabric. There are loads of fabrics on the market, so you have to get the right one. You want a non-woven geotextile filter fabric, preferably a low ounce fabric, a three ounce fabric. That is what you're looking for. Here is another failed French drain system that we had to rip out of the ground. This one had catch basins on the French drain line. Same exact thing. Catch basins are going to allow contaminants into your French drain and it's going to clog the perforations. This is also a socked pipe that just had gravel around it, so it was already failed to begin with. But you don't want to add catch basins to your French drain. Your French drain needs to be 100% separate from every other drain that you're going to put into your system. That way contaminants don't get into it. Now, I'm going to keep giving you guys examples. I'm going to keep videoing the systems that we rip out and show you the failures in them and why they failed. We like to build systems that are going to last forever, at least the rest of my life. That way I don't have to worry about it. I know because I've been in this industry long enough. I know that if you add catch basins to a French drain, a downspout to a French drain, you don't use geofabric, you do all these things that I'm talking about, whether you're cutting corners or you're doing it by mistake, whatever the case may be, I see the failures. I camera snake these systems all the time, guys. I camera snake the schedule 40, SDR 35, triple wall, dual wall, corrugated pipe, it doesn't matter. I've camera snaked them all. I've seen the issues in them. I've seen the pros, I've seen the cons. Once you do this long enough, it becomes like clockwork. So we are just out here trying to educate and teach you guys the pros and cons, what to do, what not to do, and try to help you out the best we can. If you're a subscriber and a fan to our channel, you've probably already seen this clip in a past video, but I'm going to go ahead and show it again for anybody that's new. We took this clear corrugated drain pipe and we put a bunch of debris in it and we're going to run water with a garden hose through it to show that corrugated pipe does move debris. Now granted, this clear corrugated pipe, the corrugations aren't quite as big as what you would buy in a drainage pipe, but it's close enough guys corrugated pipe moves debris it moves water just fine as long as the pipe is pitched correctly now if the pipe is back pitched or if it has bellies or if it's all wavy like a roller coaster then of course it's not going to move water efficiently and it's not going to move debris and it's going to settle in those low areas of the pipe but if the pipe is installed correctly it will move debris just fine those corrugations create turbulence the turbulence kicks debris up and the water pushes it forward, kicks it up, pushes it forward, kicks it up, pushes it forward over and over again. It's like an ocean when the waves are breaking against the coastline. It's moving trash. It's moving debris. Seaweed pushes up dead fish, all kinds of stuff will get pushed up on the shore. It's no different. The turbulence gets created when a heavy rain event comes through and a large amount of water gets put through the system. This will move the debris that's sitting in there out of those corrugations. Now, once the rain slows up, what ends up happening is some debris will settle in those corrugations, but on the next heavy rain, 
it's going to push that debris out and new debris is going to end up settling in there. And it's going to work like that over and over and over again. Now, when you run into problems is because of bellies and because of areas in the pipe that were installed incorrectly or all wavy. Once again, this goes back to a faulty installer. If the installer fails, the whole entire system fails. It's no different than PVC pipe, dual wall pipe, any kind of smooth walled pipe. It doesn't matter the pipe. It's going to fail if the installer fails from the beginning. That's just the way it works. Now, this next clip where I'm going to show you here, this is where an installer failed. This guy, he installed this, didn't even bury it up. It looks insane. And he ran off on the client on this one because he didn't know what he was doing. And it's a corrugated pipe. This is another reason why this pipe gets such a bad name is because of stuff like this that's floating around on the internet that people see. I mean, this is just crazy, but it is what it is. If you hire somebody that is a drainage contractor, that is a drainage installer that knows what they're doing when it comes to drainage, they are not going to install a system like this. So make sure you do your research on anybody you're going to be hiring to install a yard drainage system for you. And you'll be able to tell if they know what they're doing or not, especially if you've done your research. All right, guys, so that just about does it for this video. I hope you gained some knowledge from watching it. And I just want to thank all of our subscribers and the people that continue to watch our videos and support us. It really means a lot. And if you live in the Tampa Bay area or surrounding counties and you're experiencing rainwater intrusion into your property or a flooded yard, give us a call. We can come out there, assess the situation, and help design a system that fits your needs. And until next time, this is SWDS signing off.